Are you ready for the changes coming to the Medicare Advantage and the Part D prescription market in 2025? No matter what happens, the most important step that you can take is to conduct a drug plan analysis and compare all of the available options where you live. Today, we will show you exactly how to do that using Medicare.gov, which is the same process that we teach our clients at our agency, Giardini Medicare, to make their annual Part D review as simple as possible. One of the great benefits of using medicare.gov is that you can save your list of medications like we showed in our previous video and you can compare all the Part D plans that are available so no option is hidden from you. I want all my options on the table. Now just as a quick reminder, you can begin the analysis right now and every year Medicare releases all the necessary information online starting October 1st. However, you won't be able to actually enroll in a new Part D plan until October 15th. The annual election period, it will remain open until December 7th, and then the last plan that you choose by the end of the day on December 7th will be the one that takes effect January 1st of next year. And don't worry, your enrollment in the new plan will automatically cancel your current Part D coverage on December 31st. Let's go to Medicare.gov and walk you through this process step by step. First, make sure you are on the official government website, which you should see in the upper corner here. They also give you some tips to confirm that it is the correct website. Just know that the look of the website, it often changes throughout the fall, especially after it is first released. So don't be alarmed if things look a little bit different than they do in this video. Next, you'll go to the corner and you'll click login. And this is where you can log into your personal Medicare.gov account. You'll of course do that by putting in your username and your password and clicking the login button. If you have if you haven't already, you can also create your account using the information from your red, white, and blue card, and we will put a quick guide in the description for how you can also make this account. But for now, we will assume you already have that username and password, so we will go ahead and click login. Once you log in, you will be taken to your Medicare.gov account home. There are many good things you can access in this account that we will cover in a future video, but for now, just go to the drop down where it says Health and Drug Plans. You can click on that, and then you will go to Find Health and Drug Plans. This should take you to your current coverage overview where you will see your current Part D or or Medicare Advantage coverage. Before you click the Find Plans Now button, make sure to scroll down and you can update your list of pharmacies if necessary. So we'll scroll down and see that. If you need to change the list of pharmacies, just click where it says Edit My Pharmacies. Then you can remove pharmacies if you would like, or you can add other pharmacies. To remove them, you simply click where it says Remove Pharmacy, which we will do right here. And then if you want to add a pharmacy, you can of course click where it says Add Another Pharmacy. Once you do this, you can scroll through the list of pharmacies and it's going to go by the distance nearest to the zip code in your account. You can always change the zip code if you need to. You can put the zip code in and you can change that if you'd like. For now, we will add a couple extra pharmacies. So we already have CVS and we have Kroger. We will add Walgreens to the list and we will click add pharmacy. You should see the box checked and we will add the mail order pharmacy as well. Just know that you won't be able to add a specific mail order provider like Express Scripts or Optum or one of the others, but don't worry, you are fine just selecting mail order in this case. Once you do have your list of pharmacies, click done, and then it will take you back to your list of pharmacies, and you can go back and click OK once you have confirmed you are good with that pharmacy list. Next, we will scroll down, we will find the medication list, and we will update it as needed in order to make sure that the 2025 coverage you're looking at has a proper coverage for your medications. This should be just below the pharmacy list, but once you do this, you will see your drug list where it may already have some prescriptions listed if you have filled some in the recent past. If you do need to edit this in any way, you can go to edit my drug list. You can also do something kind of unique here and we can click add recently filled drugs and it will let you choose to add medications that you have filled in the last 12 months if you would like. Otherwise, you can go back, we'll cancel out of that and then you can go to edit my drug list. Again, this will take us to our saved list of medications. To remove a medication, you simply click remove, or you can also edit it if you need to change the dosage or the frequency. So if you edit, again, if we want to change this from 30 to 60 every month, we can do that right there and update this drug. For now, we're just going to remove these medications from the list and we are going to pretend that we are starting from scratch. So if you come into it and you have no medications, this is what it would look like in your account. To add a new medication to your list, click add a drug. You'll see that as you start typing in the name of the medication, it will give you some pre-populated suggestions. 
In this case, we are going to choose lisinopril, and then we will select add drug. Now we have to select the dosage from the dropdown, which in this case, we will stick to the 10 milligram tablet, but you could always change it. Then we will choose the quantity and the frequency, which is how much of the medication that you take and how often. In this example, we will assume that you take one tablet per day and you get 30 day supplies from the pharmacy. So this means that we would choose the quantity of 30, just like it has, and we would choose every month for the frequency, but you also have other options. Now, if you normally get a 90 day supply of your medications, you would simply change it to a 90 for the quantity, and then the frequency would change to every three months. And then once you do that, you can do add to my drug list. A couple of quick notes about the dosage and the frequency. If you have a medication that you rarely use like an inhaler, you can even choose a frequency of up to one year like you saw. And then also if you have a tier five specialty medication, just know that those medications, they generally have to be filled as a 30 day supply. A couple of other things to be careful of when you're adding your list of medications is to make sure you are specifying if you're taking the brand or generic version of a medication, as well as whether it is specifically a capsule, a tablet, or something else. In reality, we recommend that you just grab your prescription bottles and any medications when updating your list so it is as accurate as possible and you just have them in front of you with the computer. As an example of the brand and the generic decision, on here we can do add another drug. And then when we do this, let's find Synthroid. So we'll have it pre-populate and Synthroid will be our selection. We will add drug. And now Medicare.gov will actually prompt us and we'll say this is a generic medication or it has a generic medication. Do you want to add the generic instead or keep it as the brand? In this case, most people actually take the generic version of the medication, which is the levothyroxine sodium that you see. But if you do take the brand, of course, just click keep brand. In this case, we will assume you're taking the generic and we will add the generic medication. Then for the dosage, you can also see that it gives us the option of capsules and tablets. Again, most people in this case will take the tablets and if you accidentally choose capsules, the costs are likely much higher than expected. So we will keep it instead with tablets and we will do 88 MCG tablets. We will then add that to my drug list. And finally, we will add one more medication using that add recently filled drugs method. We'll see ones that we have filled in the last 12 months and we'll do the atorvastatin calcium tablet. Don't worry that it double clicks, it will only add one of them. And then we will add that and go back to my save drugs. So now we have our list of three medications that we will go with for the analysis. At this point, when your medication list is fully updated, you are ready to run the analysis of 2025 options, so press Done Adding Drugs at the bottom. This will take you back to the plan overview, and then you can go to where it says Find Plans Now, and you will click on that button. You will want to make sure that 2025 is selected, and then you will want to make sure that your zip code is correct, which in this case it is. If your zip code is not correct, you can change it to whatever you would like, but we will keep it at what we have. And then we will click Continue. In this case, you will want to select that you're searching for Medicare drug plan with part D in the parentheses. But of course you could choose Medicare Advantage if that is something that you are looking for. Then choose find plans. And now you're ready to compare the part D options for next year. For our final part of the video, we will show how to compare your current Part D coverage to other Part D plans on the market for 2025. At the top, you will actually see where it says your next plan. This will show you the plan name, the ID number, the monthly premium, estimated yearly cost, as well as the plan deductible. This next Part D plan is the Part D coverage that you would have for 2025 if you don't change your coverage. Then if you scroll down, you can start sorting 2025 plans, and this is best done by using the lowest drug and premium cost option, as you can see right here on the screen. The reason why this is so helpful is because it combines the monthly premiums as well as your estimated out-of-pocket prescription cost for the year. This even includes your expected deductible spending. There is also an estimate for mail order versus retail pharmacies. For example, if we scroll down and then we try to find the Silver Script Choice Plan, the section with the total drug and premium cost includes the $28.30 per month premium, which ends up being about $340 for the year, plus the expected amount for what you would actually spend for your medications when you fill them at the pharmacy. As a reminder for 2025, although there is a $2,000 spending cap for covered medications, this does not include premiums. So if you have very expensive medications, don't be surprised if you see an estimated combined cost cost of over $2,000. If we scroll back up, really the easiest thing to do at this point is to narrow down your options to plans with the lowest overall cost projected for 2025. 
If your current plan does have the lowest overall cost for the next year, there's nothing you need to do, which is the case in this situation. Again, you can see your next plan. And then when we see the lowest overall, it is also the lowest going into next year. In this case, the plan would renew, but with the updated 2025 coverage and cost. If you do want to look at the details of the plan with the lowest projected cost, simply click where it says plan details. When you are looking at the plan details, there are important things that you should check. First, you can see a breakdown of premiums and medication costs near the top of the page. Then we recommend scrolling down to check the pharmacies, which we will do now. This is where you will see which pharmacies are preferred, which are standard, and which might not even be in network. You will want to make sure that the pharmacies that you plan on using are preferred or at the very least in network. If it only says in network here and not preferred and in network, that generally means it is a standard pharmacy. You can also do something that I think is kind of cool and you can click change pharmacies. Once you do that, it will take you to a map and it will let you see preferred and standard pharmacies for this specific plan and you can scroll out by distance. And here we have an example of a standard pharmacy because again, it does not say preferred. It will also show you the estimated cost of medications at the pharmacies on the map. Now going back, another important thing to do when looking at specific plan details is you want to go down pretty far down the analysis and you want to go to where it says view more drug coverage. You'll click on that. It will probably be blue or purple. I'm actually colorblind, so I'm not sure, but it will expand some good information. And often people miss these crucial details when doing this analysis. Here you can see the co-pays for the different medication tiers of the plan. Preferred generic in this case is tier one and it goes up to specialty, which is tier five. Just below Below the chart, you will see how your specific medications are covered by the plan, and it will say which tier they fall under, as well as if they may require prior authorization, quantity limits, or step therapy, as you can see here. This can be helpful because if one plan you are considering doesn't require prior authorization or step therapy and another does, you might lean towards that option without the restrictions, if the costs are pretty similar. Also, if it says yes to the quantity limit, you can click on that and it will show you the actual limit. For this case with the atorvastatin, the limit is 30 tablets per 30 days, so we wouldn't have to worry about it since for our example, we aren't taking more than that. Lastly, perhaps the most confusing thing when looking at plan details is figuring out the deductible and which medications actually count towards it. To show you this part, I'm going to go back and add one more medication real quick and come right back to this screen. In this case, I went back and I added the phenofibrate tablets. For this plan, the deductible, as you can see, is $590 for the year. However, it only applies to medications that are tier 3 through 5. This is not going to be clearly shown unless somehow Medicare.gov changes their system, but it has not been that way for at least a couple of years. But if we go back to the cost at the different pharmacies, so if we scroll down and we keep going down, you can expand and see the cost at each pharmacy. Then if we look at it and we see cost before deductible and then cost after deductible, if the cost before the deductible are lower than the retail cost, so in this case for a Torvastatin, cost before deductible is zero and then the retail is $1.15. That means that this medication is not applying to the deductible and you just pay the lower copay right away. Now if we go out of here and let me go back to the other, the main page. And then we again click on the plan like the silver script choice and go to their plan details. Now if I scroll down, I'll go a little bit slower here. We will see that when we go to the breakdown of the pharmacies, you can tell that the cost before the deductible is the same as the retail cost, which indicates that for these medications, you'll have to pay your deductible amount before you'll pay the lower copays after the deductible. And this is despite these ones even being low tier medications, because for this plan, the deductible applies to all medications. Lastly, if we scroll up and we go back to the homepage, you will see that you can also compare up to three plans at one time. And we'll do that. We'll compare these three plans. So we'll add those to compare and then we will click the compare button. And then here you can compare some of the basic costs between the two of them. Now that we've seen all of these different options, we'll go back to the plan results. If you do want to make a Part D plan change, just know there will be a green enrollment button that pops up next to the plan details. You can simply click on that button and then you can follow through the application process directly on Medicare.gov if you would like. The new coverage would then begin January 1st 
and your current Part D plan will be canceled at the end of the year once that is processed. To keep your current Part D coverage, there is nothing you need to do if it is still offered in 2025. However, just know that even if you want to keep your coverage, it will change the cost or the coverage. Something is going to change going in to 2025. So although you can keep the plan with the same name, in most cases, again, the coverage, the deductible, something will likely change with it. And last but not least, if your plan is being completely terminated, that would leave you without any coverage going into 2025. So make sure you do select a new plan. If you have any other questions about the process, simply put them in the comments below.